welcome everyone to another episode of the Mod Squad Movie Show. I'm your host, Harley, as always, joined by the wonderful Felix. What's up? And also the fabulous Brandon. Cheers. Okay, guys. Let's start our show off with our sponsors. We have Scott, Scott Straka Art and Skullectomy by Jolt 7 Studios. Scan those QR codes. Let them know the Mod Squad sent you. We also have shirts. You know how to order these shirts. We've told you many times before. Go to the community and let us know what shirt you want. Guys, go check out my, the conversations with the Mod Squad. We got our very own Brandon this week that dropped. It okay, was a pretty good interview. Good. Digging it. And then next Friday might be someone else on the screen. We'll see. Let's go to our first trailer. Very exciting. Okay, guys, it is the new House of Dragons. We fight for our queen! My father chose me, his firstborn child, to succeed him. He held to his decision until death. And yet, Alison's son sits my throne. I mean to fight this war and win it. The realm will soon tear itself apart. If men do not remember the oath sworn to King Viserys and to his rightful heir. The High Towers are marching. You must crush this beast at its head. Our terms are very simple. Renounce the false king and bend the knee to the queen. Or your house burns. You have to. When the desire to kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten, you will not even remember what began the war in the first place. We fight for our queen! Fear what I've begun. The first season of this is what made me go back and watch Game of Thrones. And I watched, I think in a month and a half, we binged all six or seven. Well, however many seasons it was. It was really good. Yeah. Um, the last two seasons, I get all the hate. I really do. Um, but, you know, we're not here about that. This, I can't wait for it. I'm really excited for it and looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. I loved this series. I'm really excited for it. A late bloomer, like I said, but I'm really liking it. Cool, and I'll do it again. Okay, time for some news. From Joe Blow, Norman Reedus, and Sean Patrick, Florence are returning for a... Rem it's, sorry. Reimagining. It's Flanner. It's Flannery. Sean Patrick Flannery. From Joe Blow, Norman Reedus and Sean Patrick Flannery are returning for a remaindering of Boondock Saints Reimagining. to introduce new characters. So, so I guess they're it's on. A, it's a reimagining? Or it's a, it's yes. a third movie? Both. Did it say reimagining, okay. or am I giving you hard? It, no, it time? says reimagining. Okay, that's what I thought you were doing. new characters, but like they're basically reimagining. Re it's, it's a third group. one. From what I read, yeah, when, mm -hmm. what it sounds like, they're yeah. just looking for new saints. So uh, you know, pass the torch to. So yeah. it is a third one. Okay, good. It better be. What the first one is is one of my favorite movies i yeah. love that movie the second one was pretty good so i'm definitely looking forward to a third one i love these guys they're freaking great these movies are bitching and it's norman reed i really love him
Okay. From Joe Blow, Aaron Taylor Johnson reportedly will be formally offered the role of James Bond. I see it. I mean, who else would they gonna pick? It's been it's been a while. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't dislike it. I didn't really care for him as Quicksilver. You luckily, I, I personally am glad. Or in Godzilla, he, he wasn't Ultron, too good. In Ultron, and... he wasn't great. Um, he was really good in Bullet Train, and I think that yes. was the movie that probably kind of maybe sealed the deal for him on the studio going after him as James Bond. Uh, he played a, a pretty badass role in that one. So going off of Bullet Train, I guess I could kind of see it. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I see what, where you're coming from. It's just hard to fill in the shoes of some of the, you know, the other greats that we've had. So you kind of right, but you know, I've kind of it's... felt that way about a. a I, I probably felt that way about Daniel Craig when when they first in, announced him as James Bond. I was like, what? He doesn't look like Bond. He's yeah. he's blonde. You know, blue eyes, blonde and... hair, and blue eyes. What the what the hell is that? And then he turned out to be one of the best friggin' Bonds. He didn't have the best Bond movies necessarily, but he was. A, a, a great bond. bond yeah so i'm definitely willing to to give aaron taylor johnson uh benefit of the doubt on this Just depends one. on the I script, think script uh... yeah yeah okay from comicbook.com the penguin trailer who is dc's rec calibris this y'all want to see this trailer no nah. but um back to the article there he is <laughs> every time i see him it's hard to believe that that's carlin Farrell. i know when it, i was a kid really does... there's a gangster Real old school type. Rex Calabresi. He was a big deal. He helped people. He saw you on the street, he call out to you. When I'm 14 or something, he has a heart attack and dies. Still holding a cigar. In my neighborhood, they throw a parade in his honor. Freaking parade. I mean, it wasn't fancy, but it was a gesture. To show love of what he meant. Can you imagine to be remembered like that? What a cool monologue. Man, I can't wait. That's some of like Colin Farrell's best acting right there, I think. Yeah. Now makeup, the makeup is impressive. Like usually fat makeup, you can tell you can see makeup. and in the suit can, and everything can, but in this yeah, one you it, it looks it's, like him when it's a fat suit you can tell when it's fat makeup uh this show props to the makeup department because holy shit yeah it doesn't really look like colin farrell at all you can tell kind of in the eyes and that's really it like that's it's impressive you I can tell he's loving the role that. too he's like throwing yeah. it all in there that's what I'm saying, man. That that looks like this looks like it's gonna be some of his best acting. And he's done some yeah. good shit. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him in this one. Okay, this next article uh, I'm kinda stumped, but here we go. You picked it. I know, but it, it, it threw me when I read it. From Collider, Pedro Pascal, Queer Western Romance. 
Strange way of life gets Netflix release day. It's got two good actors in it. It's in the vein of uh, Brokeback, from what I'm hearing. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. So. <laughs> we're keeping it PG here. That was perfect, Felix. Shenanigans. Oh, oh shenanigans. Yeah, Pedro Pascal and Ethan Hawke in a gay western. Welcome what to more 2024, can we say? people. Jesus, yeah, I don't even know what to say about that one. Did you, especially now, with, did you guys see Brokeback? I'm going to be honest, I've never seen it. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched it like when it first came out um, on, not in theater, but like on uh, video or whatever. Uh, the wife and I, I remember the wife and I watched it and uh, the, you know, it, it, you know, it's a good movie. It's a very well-made movie. Um, it's not for everyone, right? Um, there were some scenes, you know, the shenanigans, were, uh, shenanigans <laughs> yes. But, I mean, fantastic movie, very well made, very well acted and everything. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal and, and uh, what's his name? No, I'm just kidding. Lady, uh, yeah, we're, we're great in that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing, I mean, this, this movie is definitely going to draw some comparisons to Brokeback Mountain. It's just going to, it, it's whether it wants to. Getting a lot of acclaim in the, uh, the festival yeah. circuit, so... I'm hearing yeah. good things about it. I'm sure it. it is. I mean, that's Hollywood. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll probably uh, check it out. You know, I, I definitely uh, am able to watch movies with an open mind. So, especially with these guys. Yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing what they do. <laughs> Are you? I'm looking forward to shenanigans. Uh, some, the shenanigans. some uh, mountaintop shenanigans. Okay, let's go to our last trailer. Okay, here we go. Close your eyes. Close them. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. This is another one where it wasn't on my... uh... When you was coming out, and I was Tell like, me, yeah. what comes into your mind? Even if you're a Star Wars fan, it's still, uh... Like... You know, I was still looking forward to it, per se, Balance. but this trailer really did it for me. I see fire. I mean, Trinity, come on. Exactly. Doing some... Trinity shenanigans. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. This take place around the Dark Vegas era. A bit, but just before Palpatine. Or is it further back? This isn't about good or bad. This is about power, and who is allowed to use it. What is that? That looks badass. It looks dark and, yeah, you know, they're 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 calling it kind of like a Star Wars horror, you know, series. I wouldn't necessarily say that it looks very horrorish, but <laughs> but uh, it definitely looks more adult, you know, which than the others, yeah. I'm all for it because you know Disney definitely um, watered down a lot of the the Star Wars stuff that they that they did there, especially with the with the movies with the sequels. Uh, the series, though, they've been doing a pretty damn good job with the series. I think they need to stick with that. It gives them a, a smaller scope, you know, a, a smaller story to focus on. 
to, to put their effort into. And they just need to keep hiring good writers and directors. That's what I think and it they've is. Been, they've yeah. been doing a pretty damn good job with that. Yeah, I'm just another one I'm looking, you know, wasn't like I said, I was kind of looking forward to it, but I saw this and it just got me excited for it. So now I'm like looking into the uh, the time frame when it happened and see like, you know, because, you know, someone's going to pop up in it. So, yeah, but no, yeah, it it takes place like it says 100 to 200 years before. Oh, that's um, way before then. Before the, the Skywalker saga. So, um, yeah, during the High Republic era. So. I don't think we're going to be seeing a whole lot of familiar faces. Maybe some, you know, Yoda when he was, because that dude was like, you know, 500 years old or yeah. something. And then Wookiees live forever too. Maybe so, some R2. Um, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. So we might see a couple, uh, but I think it's going to be mostly uh, newer faces, which I'm happy about. Yes. Okay, guys, let's be coming soon. Okay, March 29th, we have Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, um, In the Land of Saints and Sinners, La Shimura, um, Asphalt City, The Listener, Carol Duda, Topless, at the Honador and a fragile flower. What are you guys looking forward to? Godzilla and Kong, man, hands down. I'm probably going to go that Saturday to check it out. Yeah, we'll be going opening weekend to go to go see it. I mean, that's just a good, you know, family popcorn, fun, yeah. popcorn flick. Yeah. Okay. So, what are we watching this week? Um, I seen Three Body Problem, I think it's called, and Alone on Netflix. Both of them are good. They were good. How was that Three Body Problem? I was checking out that trailer for it. It, it was pretty interesting. Did you watch it's a group thing? group of friends. Yeah, we, we we watched the whole thing. It definitely definitely leaves it open for our third season. Just a group of group of friends that it's not really a. Just a group of friends where some of them don't make it through the whole series and there's something going on with aliens just to be you know and it it could be good or bad that's what you don't know through the whole series it is you said it opens it up for a third season are there two seasons no a second it? season it... no it opens oh, up okay. for another season oh okay i thought you said a third season I went and saw um, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Seeing that tomorrow. Night. Is it worth that it? Was, uh, yeah. Oh, for sure. It was wow. a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it, it was a, a really good Ghostbusters sequel. It was good to see them back in New York. Uh, I feel like that was the thing that was missing from the last, the last movie. One. Uh, it, uh, it had some really good moments with the original Ghostbusters, of course. Uh, a couple of throwbacks to Ghostbusters 2, which we really haven't uh They don't really touch on, yeah. No, they... they Do they talk the about the Statue of Liberty two. walking? Yeah, right. I'm not going to ruin that for you. I want, I'll, I want you to, you know, go in. I know you don't mind spoilers, but you love spoilers. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, there's some things that you need to go in with a with a, you know, a fresh mind on. But, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. We we enjoyed it. I took Amber and Chance to go see it. I got the oh, – I wish I had it with me. I got the um, – we went to the Regal, and I got the Ghost Trap popcorn bucket. It's different than the AMC one, but it's pretty awesome. And uh, – yeah, and then I've got a lot of movies to catch up on this weekend. We've got I've got my film roulette movie that I still need to watch. Uh, we might Sitting go do here. a double feature of uh, Immaculate and uh, A Night with the Devil. Uh, might do that's that another on one I want to see as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to to both of those. So, uh, and then I'm gonna check out the new Roadhouse remake, which. Uh, it looks yeah. like an awesome time. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. And I well, love the original. So. 
I like the original, but go ahead, Harley. This week I watched Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV on HBO. Yeah, I've been hearing about that. How was it? It makes you it, it makes you look at Nickelodeon and all those shows that we watched growing up and like especially for all that, like all those jokes yeah. and the skits and then you're like when you're a kid you don't really Let think about it. But then you right. watch the interviews that they're doing, and you're like, "Oh, it, yeah, it, ew." So you finished yeah, it then? I feel like I was feel it like I'm on the last episode, but they were from the way it looks, they're releasing new episodes each week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's probably why I, I, I honestly probably won't watch it. I, I Same know here. that. You know, they have I, completely... I'm an adult, I'm an adult and it. I know that these, these kids probably weren't treated the right way. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I don't want to know um, everything that went on, honestly. Because, like, I, I would rather live in uh, denial what is... and, <laughs> and not know, honestly. What's that saying? Something is bliss. Um, ignorance is ignorance bliss. Ignorance is bliss, yeah. Yeah. Well, they've completely ruined all that for me. Right. And I don't want to know how the sausage was made. So I probably won't watch it because I know they they all went through a lot of shit. And, well, I mean, and then it, it yeah. also explains why Amanda Bynes had the breakdown she did because of all the trauma oh, yeah. that she went through from oh, the sure, director yeah. of all that and the Amanda show. Yeah. That like that guy was horrible. Lost, lost her fucking mind. Yeah. She doesn't even look like the same person anymore. Mm-mm. But they, it has completely ruined Nick, right. Nickelodeon for me. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, that does it for this episode of the Mod Squad Movie Talk Monday. Go check out Back to the Retro Review, The Daily Dank, The Last Podcast You Want, and The Asylum with Harley. And go check out all our other shows. You're watching the movie show. Go check out the horror show and the gaming show. And we go live every Saturday night with the giveaway. Also, go check out our community. A lot of fun things happen there. Well, that does it. Oh, conversations. And go check out conversations. Still trying to remember that one because that's new. But that does it for this episode for Felix, myself. Brandon and the entire mod squad. See you next time, Puddin'. See ya. Cheers.